Hey, how's everybody doing? I'm Tom with Snipeback. It's day 345, 365 days toward racial change. Pleasure to see you and be with you again. We're talking about being black or the black experience in America, what uh, challenges, pitfalls, uh, resistance that we encounter here in the land, um, some of America's clever devices to keep the resistance and the pressure on us, uh, and a lot of a lot of issues that we have to deal with and navigate consistently in the land. Um, you know, we're going to talk about uh, one of my. It's a favorite subject of mine, but it's hard for me to articulate, but I, I've got to keep pressing it on and presenting it occasionally here at Racial Change because it's an important uh, aspect of racism and it's important to understand its function and how uh, the, the mechanism of the integration uh, is just so damaging to uh, the black experience. Uh, so, so bear with me today. I hope I can make sense to you today. Um, I'm inspired to do this work uh, by a man named Dr. Claude Anderson. He articulates this stuff much better than I can, and uh, we'll be in his one of his texts, Powernomics, today to talk about the issue. Read three of his works, a black history reader, hundred one questions you never thought to ask, black labor, white wealth, search for power, and economic justice, and Dr. Anderson's national plan to empower black America. Powernomics. You can find Dr. Anderson here uh, on YouTube and powernomics.com. I um, mean, you see the uh, hashtag us too simple. You'll find black women supporting one another having their community. Check out Black Enough, B L A G G E N U F, kind of black Facebook experience. Um, if you can't find your flavor here on the World Wide Web, do what, you, do what I did. Start your own uh, little gig here. And see what uh, see what happens. If you have a business mind, uh, go reach out to Dr. Boyce Watkins at the Black Business School, theblackbusinessschool.com, uh, kind of for your entrepreneurial needs. Also, Tyrone Gregory at uh, um, Self Employed Tax Guy. Find him on LinkedIn, Twitter. He's not very hard to find. Uh, if you got interested in money check out uh, this book, Preach from Jekyll Island, teach about the Federal Reserve, um, how American money works, why it does what it does in the land, and of course, we can't forget to talk about Uncle Tom's Cabin, Harriet Beecher Stowe's phenomenal work, fictional life, uh, slave life in America, but informed by factual events. So today, I wanted to get kind of get right into it. Got a lot of material here today. Uh, talking about integration, right? And, you know, part of this can also um, dovetail or complement um, this inclusion argument as well. But today we'll just talk about integration. You know, I love coffee. Ah, uh, great. I love coffee and. Um, the idea with coffee, the way I like it, I like cream and sugar in my coffee, but I don't overwhelm my coffee with cream and sugar, right? I own the, the condiments are going to complement the coffee, right? They, they, they serve coffee-ness, if you will, right? They don't, they don't overwhelm the coffee. They don't supplant the coffee, right? I don't, I don't drink down cream and I don't eat sugar and then uh, you know, think about coffee as like an aftertaste you know the, the, the flavors mix but it's dominated by the coffee right the coffee's integrated sure the coffee's integrated but it's dominated by actual coffee right um, the, the coffee's um, um, the, the powers that be have, have only allowed 
with the, the extra ingredients, right? Maybe you like nutmeg, cinnamon, uh, cream, sugar, yeah, but it's dominated by coffee. And coffee is always going to dictate um, how far those condiments can can go in their incursion into the coffeeness, right? Now, don't you latte and cappuccino people, frappa, chapa pep people <laughs> mess with me about all this other stuff. Uh, you, you know my, my illustration means, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it at all. You know, another illustration, though, with this idea of integration, food is great. You can do food. Uh, it works so nicely, right? Um, I, I, You know, I've been in and out of rehab and had drug and alcohol issues. Well, I was in this one place in North Carolina. It was a, it was a home, beautiful place up in the mountains of North Carolina. And, oh, the, the man that owned the place liked his food salty. And I was like, uh, I guess I didn't mind it. I don't care how you like your food, but the problem is his wife did the cooking and she put the salt on everything. Like, like everybody was now drafted to eat the salty food. And, and when I say salty, I'm not talking about bacon or ham you know, naturally salty or smoked or something like that. I'm talking salt was like the meal, right? The salt had the condiment overwhelmed uh, the beef, chicken, pork, uh, potatoes, um, vegetables. It was salt, right? That, that's not the idea of cooking well at all. <laughs> not a good example, right? That That's an integration gone bad that the condiment has come in and overran the whole environment so that salt dominated. Um, you know, I, in, in a lot of ways, I think that's what uh, some white people are really afraid of with this integration thing, you know, um, that, that the, the black people come and overwhelm and take over. Right, the integration, integration, what I'm trying to get through is like, integration is a term used and it, it is in the hands of the people who employ it, right? They, they made it uh, attractive enough uh, to the black community where the black community was like, yeah, we need to integrate, right? And if you read Dr. Anderson's material, you read uh, his, look at some of these, his YouTube videos, you will see like, you know, um, Black people were like mesmerized with this idea of integration. And I'm, I'm not without um, justification, right? Because for black people look, you know, across the road, but the grass was greener. And, you know, white people, you know, they had infrastructure probably had a level of uh, cleanliness, probably had a, you know, a level of order and a love uh, so appealing to uh, to black folks. You take the Brown v. Board of Education, uh, where integration um, was one of the, the early uh, experiments with integration, right? It was like, you know, well, instead of distributing wealth equally in the communities, right? Because the problem, the, the Brown B uh, Board of Education, uh, you know, erupted because uh, the white people were getting wealth, privilege, and favor uh, from government, community, and whatnot. You know, they, their money was really driving their resources in the white schools and black folks were generally left out of, of the 
you know, opportunities to participate in the well. So it looked attractive. So what, um, you know, black folks, and black folks, I can't go into it deeply right now, black folks were, were kind of got infiltrated by white interests to, to guide the conversation, right? To, to you, know, you know, how do you pers persuade somebody? You know, you don't necessarily persuade them. You, you get them into a position where they feel like the choice that they're making is their own. You've just planted seeds, reasoned, provided, you know, elements and some um, some proofs and things like that. Uh, but then, you know, when it comes to decision time, you, you leave it up to that person. So, so it looks like they've made the decision when actually they've been manipulated uh, and positioned to make that decision. You've just facilitated, you, you're good with rhetoric and your words and you've just facilitated the conditions to make that person make that decision in your favor. And that's what happened with this uh, Brown v. Board of Education as well, right? Um, uh, blacks back then, you know, have been interested, infiltrated by white concerns, and maybe not necessarily white people, but you know, black people maybe with influence to guide the conversation to get uh, black people to make a decision on their own to integrate, right? Instead of getting equal access to funds to fix roofs on the school, to get better books, to maintain infrastructure, plumbing, um, busing, and things like that, they said, well, this enterprise is already built over here so we'll we'll just go right into there and you know I could take up the rest of the video talking about you know America would have been that what America would have been looked a whole lot different if integration did not happen you'd actually you'd actually have two entities in the land uh, possibly competing and things like that. But of course that didn't happen because we integrated. But the integration was always uh, a one directional and the, the destination for integration was always uh, a controlled space, right? Um, it was a place where, as, as we'll just use schools uh, for now, we'll talk about some other things. You know, but it's a place where information is controlled, right? With integration, the young black child is, uh, you know, conditioned to know early on that the color of that child's skin ha has this um, has this bearing on the rest of their lives. Uh, the, the color of the white um, child's skin uh, is going to determine some uh, direction for their lives, you know, that that's what integration did, you know, yeah, we're going to learn the same alphabet, ex be exposed to the same reading materials, be exposed to a whole lot of great stuff, but, uh, but, but we've, we've taught you early on about this race thing, so that at least when you uh, when you graduate or commence out into the world, the, the conditioning over 12 to 13 years, that that's for, a, for a, an individual that successfully completes their public education, well, then they come out and once these uh, disadvantages for black folks, advantages of privilege and wealth for white folks, once that starts to um, uh, present itself in the world, in the nation, it, it's not, it's not, it's not so bad because uh, both minds have been primed to, to work within that construct called racism in America. Uh, the integration is bad uh, because it, it's going to destroy group solidarity. It, it's a social engineering mechanism uh, 
in in the land. It, it's you know you you, you get exposed <coughs> to integration and you know you got to come with some conditioning for letting the white power have its way. I was watching an ER episode and the two black men that were coming from uh, a basketball game and one of the one of the men uh, had a bloody nose or something. He got fouled so his shirt had blood on it and it just so happened there was a big robbery and the sus uh, suspects are black. Uh, th this parallels uh, uh, some real events. Uh, if you remember a hurricane, Denzel Washington as the hurricane, the boxer and stuff. And, you know, he happened to be with his buddy and there was a robbery, right? And, and anyway, in the year episode, um, uh, the one young black man wanted to assert his rights and complain and resist it. And the other black man who grew up deep in the hood and all that uh, just took it in stride. He was conditioned. He, that's what he saw in his community um, of, of white folks, especially in badges, dominating uh, and abusing black folks you know, legally with badges, guns, and nightsticks. Right? It's very, very very lopsided power and control feature, but it's a it's a social engineering to you're engineering engineered and conditioned to um, accept that kind of behavior. I'm, I'm kind of the same way when law enforcement's around. I'm like, whatever, man. You got a gun, and law on your side, you know. Do your business so I get away from you <laughs> because. I don't know what I don't I don't know where you're at. There's no guarantee that I'll be heard if I complain or, or raise uh, some red flags or alarm uh, in that in any kind of situation. So I, I'm not very attracted to law enforcement in America either, uh, for those very reasons. Oh, integration, you know, it, it reinforces the domination, especially uh, legally, judicially, and all that. Uh, our, uh, black representation and the penal system and all that. Um, you know, it, it, integration makes it seem as though this white environment is the best and only way to make it happen. And, and, uh, and it looks, appears that way a lot in, if you look at entertainment, sports, and all that, it's like, man, if I could just handle a ball, sing a song, run fast, or something, I got a babe. Yeah. Burn my body up because, you know, white folks will pay a lot to be entertained by that, that kind of activity. But we don't have black-owned business out on that level, on that scale. Um, you know, in a, in a you know, in a wide array, you know, it's it's not as prevalent. It is there, you know. Um, and, you know we've got our entertainers that our business owners and billionaires and some getting that status and whatnot. Um, but, but that's not the common experience. You know, Jay-Z, Puff Daddy and all that stuff. I, you know, uh, their success is admirable, but it's not across the board. It's not a common experience for black people in America. Oh boy, you know, it's um, immigration groups, un I think, understand this. They don't even, it's not even an issue for them. The, the uh, immigrated groups, uh, communities that come here, you know, they may be uh, refugees or fleeing 
some kind of issue in their homeland, you know, but but they're they're not. It, it would be different if if blacks in America, if it was a constant, uh, constant warring in the land about the over the slavery issue. But no, it's it's because it's so um, so passive and dominated by white culture, you know, black folks um, really uh, might not even know this, but really have to struggle against the, the conditioning, generational conditioning as slaves uh, that I think is uh, very much alive in American society that black people have to navigate, but, but aren't understanding um, how important that is. You know, it wasn't like we were emancipated and set free and had, you know, it went on into successful lives open in the, uh, in the community. Um, it was, well, it was this freedom and, but the, but then there was this drag on the black community with Jim Crow laws, incarceration, um, uh, things going on, that dark, diabolical stuff, and it's deep south, struggling to get proper education. The 60s happened. <laughs> you know, and the, like, America's always at... at that's sad. I, I just think of that stuff off the top of my head, those facts, um, how uh, America's always at the black person. You know, I, you know one of my complaints about feeling somebody nipping at my heels, keeping me off balance uh, so I can't get a foothold and so I can think, gather my resources and see what I want to do in the land. But somebody's knocking and they want and there's racism and uh, they skipped over a work for promotion and all of it. It's like crazy. I get sick of that. You know, I ask an attractive woman, about that, she, she's probably going to tell you that, that same thing, like, you know, guys are always da 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 Oh, that guy, man, that's, you know, and, and all day I've got to you know, fend off men, uh, blah, 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 right? <laughs> that's valid. It's valid, but it's, it's the same thing racially, right? The, um, uh, for some reason, America has some serious issues with marginalization, power, and things like that. So, you know, a lot of groups can line up. I, I'll be in good company with a lot of groups with issues against America because America just doesn't let up, right? Um, I think it's acutely so uh, for being black. In uh, another day or two, we'll talk about some medical stuff and, uh, you know, st statistically, demographically, you know, black men are, are, you know, suffering some medical issues, phenomenal stuff. Uh, just being a black man, you got to watch out for. Uh, that'll be in a couple days. I'm not going to be a spoiler alert on that. You know, so, so the integration, the integrated group is always going to have less power, less ability, uh, less access to wealth and resources than the host group. That's across the board. And, you know, let's think about your workplace. I right? think your workplace is, is an integration. It's an integrated place. You, you go there and participate. But it's not a place um, where you're going to easily rise up to be uh, uh, a person to own that space, own that product, or own that service. Not, not by any means. You are going to, uh, you're going to come in, and your wages are going to be frozen and controlled. Uh, you're not going to see. Uh, uh, you know, the wages aren't going to follow uh, cost of living increases. There's a rumor 
that it's a law that it's supposed to, but I've never been on a job where um, my wages followed cost of living. Uh, that's just some kind of rumor out there. <laughs> but that's okay. Nobody, I don't think any, I don't know anybody, I don't know that, unless you're a professional and you're calling your own shots in a space where your wages are following cost of living. Um, the, uh, none of the jobs I've had, and, then, and it, that wasn't even about color. Nobody in the jobs that I've worked at was getting a uh, cost of living increases and things like that by any means. All right, let me get back on point. Integration, though. Um, uh, for blacks in America, it, it's, it's giving away it's selling up. It's it's totally giving all the power. You know, think about baseball, sports, right? Uh, those are supposed to be black owned. You know, I, you know, I, I would just say, man, forget it. Right? Let's be black owned. Let go ahead. And let the white people play their ball and stuff like that. I mean, statistically, you got black folks that dominate that. Uh, we should own those spaces, those enterprises, and whatnot. Yet, you know, uh, the, Bay, the Black Negro League just got absorbed and drafted. And it's, it's that way with all sports now, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you give Black people and mass enough time on the ice, we would dominate hockey, right? These, um, this, uh, unless you live in a cold, colder environment or can uh, spend money to put your child on ice, right? I mean, that, that's a big reason why, you know, some sports, basketball, baseball, football have such a black, consistent black presence because you don't, it happens at, uh, outside in the warm, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, if it costed money to get those skills at a younger age, uh, then you're, uh, you'd see those sports dominated more by white folks. Integration, integration, integration. We, we, we give away our power in integration, we we sacrificed everything in integration, uh, and it's, let's look at the other side. You know, integrations, white people aren't all that on fire to even have black folks come into their space, right? No, um, you look at communities. I grew up near a big city. I, I understand white flight. I understand uh, racism. When a black person moves into that space, all of a sudden there's hate slurs on the house, and um, you know, there's uh, the sidewalks is painted stuff, right? A young black man just got shot the other day running through a white neighborhood uh, down Georgia, right? I mean. And boy, it looks so peaceful and clean and calm, but but you've got these murderous people that get uh, that go into a rage when somebody different moves into that space. Dr. Anderson tells us about the five to eight percent rule, and that that is like um, I'm not sure where he got the statistic, but it makes sense that when uh, black people start to appear to be get, moving in and creating a physical um, critical mass of black people. Suddenly you got white flight, you got people running for the hills, bouncing off the walls, you know, and, you know spray paint and stuff, uh, gerrymandering, you know, how you uh, work with voting areas and stuff occurs, it's bad. So, you know, the, the 
the white folks aren't on fire for this integration. You know, and they say, well, you know, if they've got to integrate, we need to stay in control is the bottom line with this integration conversation. Uh, I'm not going to say much more about that. We might hit this again. Uh, i got 20-some more days to go. Uh, we'll see. But, it, you know, keep it in mind that it's a real issue. It's, a, it's a, something you, you've got to come to. I think I'm firmly in where I want to be on the integration debate, which is it's not good. It did not serve the black community. You know, it, did, it took away the ability to self-determine one's life, a black life, anyway. I'm going to end it right there. My name is Tom Lins Nyback. This is day 345 out of the way. 365 days toward racial change. We're almost there. I'll see you next time.